Get out of my seat, you damn bitch. Jim Acosta is an asshole. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Yesterday, the United States witnessed a medical miracle. The first doses of a COVID vaccine were administered to frontline workers across the country. The president promised a safe and effective vaccine in record time, and President Trump delivered. Earlier this year, we heard from several news outlets and so-called fact checks that President Trump would need, quote, a miracle to be right. That was an NBC News article. We were told, according to Healthline, quote, a vaccine will still take more than a year to develop. USA Today warned us that, quote, despite medical researchers' progress, the vaccine, quote, was more than a year away. And National Geographic even told us that achieving a vaccine within, quote, a year to 18 months would be absolutely unprecedented, end quote. These reports deserve their own fact check, false. President Trump has not only been the optimist, hope, hopeful to achieve a vaccine by year's end, he has also been a leader. Through oper Operation Warp Speed, President Trump, the businessman, and the president, um, as the innovator, has succeeded. President Trump directed military logistics experts at the Department of Defense to partner with health experts at Health and Human Services to ensure prompt delivery of vaccines and equipment. This includes the appointment of four-star General Perna, who oversees the global supply chain and readiness for the United States Army as Operation Warp Speed's chief operating officer. The Trump administration supported clinical trials by working to enroll participants through NIH-funded COVID protection networks and provided funding and technical support through the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Disease and Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. President Trump also directed industrial-scale manufacturing of vaccines to take place at its own risk before knowing whether these vaccines would be successful. It was a novel approach indeed to vaccine development led by President Trump. The results of these historic investments will benefit the American people and will mark the beginning of the end of the pandemic. As the first doses of the vaccine are delivered and administered, we urge all Americans to continue to wash your hands, socially distance, wear a mask when you are unable to do so. We also encourage those at the state level to improve the early and aggressive use of monoclonal antibody treatments, especially among vulnerable Americans. The Trump administration led the way, approving monoclonal antibody treatments for outpatient use, issuing two emergency use authorizations in November. Additionally, through HHS's Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, monoclonal antibody patient courses have been allocated to all 50 states. Together, these steps can play a significant role changing the course of the virus. Thank you to President Trump, and with that, I will take questions. Ben. Kelly, uh, now that the Electoral College has voted, does the President acknowledge that Joe Biden is the President-elect? Does he have any plans to invite him here to the White House? Um, the president is still involved in ongoing litigation related to the election. Uh, yesterday's vote was one step in the constitutional process, so I will leave that to him and refer you to the campaign for more on that litigation. What is his reaction to uh, Leader McConnell today congratulating Joe Biden and calling him the president-elect? I haven't gotten the president's reaction to that yet, but the president, um, again, is pursuing ongoing litigation, would refer you to the campaign for further. And what's the path forward, though, for litigation? If, if the votes have been certified, if the Electoral College has voted, there doesn't seem to be a legal recourse at this point. The campaign would have more specifics for you on legal recourse, but yesterday was one step in the constitutional process leading up to the January 20th date in the Constitution. 
Steve. Does the president plan to take the vaccine and really do it in a public way to inspire confidence among people? So the president um, currently at this moment has said he is absolutely open to taking the vaccine. He's been emphatic about that uh, to me privately and to you all publicly. Um, but he did recently recover from COVID. Um, he has the continued protective effects of the monoclonal antibody cocktail that I mentioned. Um, and he will receive the vaccine as soon as his medical team determines it's best. But his priority is frontline workers, those in long-term care facilities. And he wants to make sure that the vulnerable get uh, access first. Yes. Uh, wouldn't him taking the vaccine set an example for Americans to give them confidence? Doctors, uh, uh, Dr. Fauci, as well as the Mata Salui, both said today that they think President Trump should get the vaccine. It is a, you know, because of the, the, for himself, but B to set an example. Will he do that? Like, why not do it just to show Americans that it's safe? Because he also wants to show Americans that our priority are the most most vulnerable. There will be uh, some senior administration officials taking it publicly to instill that confidence. It is very important. And the president, uh, no, but you'll you'll learn in the next few days who that is, um, who those individuals will be. Uh, but they will be taking it publicly to instill confidence. The president wants to send a parallel message, which is, you know, our long-term care facility residents and our frontline workers are paramount in importance, and he wants to set an example in that regard. I absolutely would be open to taking the vaccine. Um, as has been reported, and as I shared with some of you yesterday, um, the White House, it will be a very limited group of people um, who have access to it initially. The president's tweet indicated that um, the White House should receive it at a later date um, to, again, prioritize the most vulnerable. Um, but some career staff, national security staff, for the purposes of continuity of government, will have access in addition to a very small group of senior administration officials for the purpose of instilling public confidence. He has said that he uh, thinks Americans will be able to take it if they want to take it. You're saying he's open to taking it. Is he going to encourage Americans to take it, or is he going to leave it up to Americans? Does he think Americans should get this shot? Absolutely. Look, these are vaccines that he oversaw the development of. He has great confidence in. He wants to see all Americans get this vaccine, and he wants to see the most vulnerable among us get it first. But absolutely, he will be encouraging uh, encouraging Americans to take this. Yeah. David. Uh, do you know when specifically when the president will veto the National Defense Authorization Act, when he's going to send the paperwork over? And why would he veto that, given the fact that passed on veto-proof majorities in Congress? So he still does plan to veto uh, the NDAA. Don't have a timeline for you on that, but he does plan to veto it. Um, he wants to make every effort to protect our military men and women, um, and will prioritize military funding in the big omnibus bill. But um, he also has other important priorities and, and I should say problems with the NDAA beyond just the absence of Section 230 repeal um, and beyond the inclusion of the Warren Amendment. Um, one of the provisions of concern is troop um, provisions about troop withdrawal and deployment in Afghanistan, South Korea, uh, and Germany. And so there are a number of provisions that um, he is weak on China, but no Republican really seems to agree with on that. Why does he think the bill is bad on China? So by not including a Section 230 repeal, uh, what you're in effect allowing um, is Twitter to uh, continue to not censor Chinese propaganda. Recently, there was a tweet by the U.S., um, the Chinese embassy in the United States about the Xinjiang province and allowing all citizens um, to enjoy the same rights, including freedom of religion. That clearly is not the case, as the Uyghurs have been absolutely tortured uh, in that province. Uh, there was another tweet that they allowed about the uh, virus originating in Wuhan. They said it was not, it did not originate in Wuhan. That obviously is Chinese disinformation. Uh, and the president's priority is to ensure that that isn't permitted. Yes. Um, did Leader McConnell give uh, the president a heads up that he was going to talk about Biden on the floor today? Um, I'm not sure if he had any call with him prior to making that statement. Uh, is uh, Secretary Mnuchin or uh, Chief Meadows going to be involved in this bipartisan meeting that's happening on the Hill today at 4 o'clock about COVID relief? I believe it's just um, congressional leaders meeting, but I'll, I'll get back to you if there is a, a White House presence there. But what I can tell you is that the White House has had a continuous presence in the stimulus talks leading on this um, from for months, uh, trying to get this phase four passed. And uh, when I spoke with the chief about this again this morning, um, he noted that Nancy Pelosi has really been standing in the way of a deal going back prior to the election when she was anti-stimulus checks, something the president has been vocal about wanting. and then. 
after the election. According to her, quote, she can now support these checks because of a, quote, new president was, were her words, uh, which is appalling to think that politics was playing into COVID relief for the American people. Um, and she stood against liability protection. This is protection for our small businesses so that they're not held liable um, for COVID incidences through no fault of their own. And she's really playing up to the trial lawyers um, and opposing liability protection, which should be something that's just mere common sense. One other question about confirmations of Biden's cabinet picks. Uh, President Trump had the benefit of the Senate starting hearings and starting the process before he was inaugurated in January uh, of 2017. Um, does the president oppose the Senate taking up uh, Joe Biden's nominees before the inauguration? I think that's a hypothetical um, and, you know, he won't get ahead of um, that activity actually happening, but he has taken all statutory requirements um, necessary to in either ensure a smooth transition or a continuation of power. Yes. Thanks, Kaylee. Uh, given the success of Operation Warp Speed, why hasn't President Trump been more visible during uh, this initial vaccine rollout? You have the vice president in Indiana today. Uh, where's President Trump? Uh, President Trump's been hard at work on COVID behind the scenes just because you don't see him at the podium every day uh, doesn't mean that he's not aggressively pursuing actions on behalf of the American people. Uh, he's briefed on COVID regularly um, and I'm here speaking with you guys. Others are out communicating this information. Yeah. Could you comment on the uh, Russian hackers breaching several federal agencies? How, how, how serious was this breach and is the Trump administration considering retaliating? Look, the U.S. government, we're aware um, of all of these reports. We're taking all necessary steps to identify and remedy any possible issues related um, to the situation. Um, as one step in that process, CISA has issued an emergency directive on Sunday night for all federal civilian agencies to review their networks for indicators of compromise uh, and disconnect or to power down solar winds, Orion products immediately. Uh, so we are taking a, a hard look on this and obviously um, take um, any sort of cyber hacks very seriously. And just one more question on Russia. Since uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has congratulated President-elect Joe Biden, any, any comment on that from the uh, Russian president? Um, no comment on that. I'll leave it to the president to react to that. Has he spoken to President Trump? Not so, that I'm aware of. No. Uh, let's see. David. Uh, does the president intend to run for election in 2024 and would you like to be part of that campaign? I will leave that to the president, but he's still pursuing on ongoing litigation at the moment uh, for this election. Yes. Uh, Todd. Uh, thanks. Uh, president Trump supported the Texas lawsuit at the Supreme Court and a uh, uh, lawsuit that President-elect Biden called an assault on democracy. How is it not, is it not anti-democratic to try to nullify 20 million votes? I think pursuing uh, legitimate litigation uh, through the judicial system is in no way assaulting democracy. In fact, it's it's using Democrat institutions in the manner uh, they are to be used uh, to pursue, pursue legitimate claims with sworn affidavits um, and additional evidence. But I do think what is an assault on democracy are the four investigations um, into President Trump over Russia collusion that turned up nothing. I mean, Mueller alone, you had 19 lawyers, 40 FBI agents, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 search warrants, millions of taxpayer dollars, all to find no collusion. And the investigation into President Trump began far before he was even elected president of the United States um, and his intel briefings um, in the transition period were even weaponized against him. Um, an insurance policy from Peter Strzok uh, was put in place against this president prior to him being elected. That is what is an assault on democracy. Blake. Thanks, Kaylee. Um, I want to ask you about COVID relief negotiations, but just to hone down on what was asked about the vaccine, yes or no, we should expect to see President Trump take a coronavirus vaccine before January 20th and do so on camera? He will take it um, when his when health experts and his White House doctor um, ask him to do so and says it's the appropriate time. He is very open to taking this, um, but also wants to prioritize our frontline workers. Since you brought up the vaccine, before you get to your next question, one thing I do uh, want to make clear is that there are um, 2.9 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine that have gone out. Um, in 21 days, there will be an additional 2.9 million of those doses because, of course, the Pfizer vaccine is two doses. Um, and there are going to be rolling updates and shipments um, of the vaccines. Of course, we've secured 
uh, millions in advance. Uh, and this Friday, there will be 4 million Pfizer vaccines going out. We are hopeful that Moderna gets approved. The F FDA said that the data looks good. We're waiting for that EUA. Uh, so hopefully there will be that EUA and then an additional 6 million Moderna doses out next week. So 10 million doses out next week. And I want to emphasize just stepping back from a macro perspective because it is so impressive uh, what this president did, making these agreements in advance. Uh, and he secured not just tens of millions of doses, but in fact, hundreds of millions. Uh, there's the 100 million with Pfizer. There's 100 million with Moderna. Uh, we've secured another 100 million from Moderna. We're hopeful um, that we will get uh, an additional 100 million from Pfizer. I think um, we will. Uh, and then Johnson & Johnson is nearing the end of its phase three clinical trial. That's another 100 million doses secured with hundreds of millions doses more um, if needed. And then AstraZeneca, which is in phase three clinical trial, 300 million doses secured. So it's a really impressive achievement what this president has done but what's your on, next on question negotiations um, so there's this meeting this afternoon the big four up on the hill we're told by the way that secretary Mnuchin will be there if if the big four if the treasury secretary are able to come to some sort of a deal would president trump sign off on it or does he have specific ask specific red lines that have to be in any sort of deal. I think we'll wait to see uh, what that deal looks like. He's um, said that he would really like to see those stimulus checks in there, but his priority at the end of the day is getting relief to the American people. We're hopeful there will be some sort of agreement, but I would note that we've been the party that's been flexible. We've been the party that's said, hey, standalone PPP, that's funding for small businesses uh, and funding for businesses generally to go to pay their employees. Uh, we've had a standalone bill that we supported there. We had a standalone, uh, standalone unemployment insurance bill. So we've been the party that's been flexible in this. Clear, if there is a deal that doesn't have direct payments, the president would support it or not? I, I'm not going to say if that's a red line or not. I won't get ahead of the negotiations, but I'll just say that we are hopeful there is a deal there that the president uh, can then look at and support. Uh, yes, Catherine. Uh, does the White House have any comment on Phoebe Bailey, the security director who had his leg amputated due to COVID? Yeah, our um, heart goes out to his family. They've asked for privacy, um, and he is recovering from what I understand. We're very pleased uh, to see that, but he and his family will be in our prayers. And has the president had a chance to speak with him? Um, I'm not sure if the president's had a private conversation with him, nor would I confirm any, any private conversation that he did have. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Over the weekend, a statue of Mahatma Gandhi was desecrated by some protesters in downtown D.C. This is for the second time this has happened. Uh, I would like to have your comments on that. Yeah, um, it's terrible. Um, no statue or memorial should be desecrated, and certainly not one uh, like that of Gandhi, who really fought for the values um, that America represents of peace, justice, and freedom. So that desecration uh, is appalling to see. It's appalling that it's happened more than once, and we believe uh, the reputation of Mahatma Gandhi should be respected, um, especially here in America's capital. Ask one more. Sure. Uh, does the president believe that the democracy in the United States is under threat? And based on the streets, what are the electoral reforms he wants to push uh, in this country? What was the first part of your question? I couldn't. Does the president believe that democracy in the United States is under threat? That democracy is under threat. Um, he believes that he certainly was under assault uh, when it comes to the investigations into his administration, the Mueller probe, uh, the unfortunate way that our FBI uh, was mishandled by folks like Andy McCabe, uh, by folks like Jim Comey, um, and weaponized in a political way uh, against his candidacy and then against his his presidency. Yes, Charlotte. Oh, thanks, Kayleen. Um, has President Trump planning to take any action after seeing the forensic audit of the machines in Antrim County, Michigan? I'd have to refer you uh, to the campaign on anything regarding uh, the election. Yeah. Just as far as the 2018 um, executive order on election interference, has he received a report yet? And when he does receive it, is any of that going to be available for the public to look at? I am not aware of any report that he's received um, to that end. Yeah. Chanel. Thank you, Kayleigh. Just want an update statement on Iran, especially in light of the just signed uh, Israel-Morocco deal. Um, where does the White House see that Iran standing in the Middle East now? Especially, what is the current assessment from the White House with regards to Iran standing in the Middle East as you continue to sign Middle East deals? Are they going to strengthen? Is it weakening? What is the current White House assessment on Iran? 
Yeah, as the, the region increasingly comes together through these peace deals, which um, Senior Advisor Jared Kushner, Avi Berkowitz, and others, um, National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien deserve a ton of credit for. It's remarkable. Um, but as the region continues to come together, our maximum pressure campaign uh, continues to be effective. Iran is increasingly isolated uh, and weakened. And when President Trump came into office, you know that the region was in extreme turmoil. ISIS had a caliphate in Iran. Uh, proxies were wreaking havoc. Uh, since taking office, President Trump has worked to rebuild trust with our regional partners and identify their shared interests. And unlike um, the previous administration, which gave Iran uh, piles of cash and a, a, a uh, deal with a sunset provision that would have allowed them to get nuclear weapons, uh, this president has isolated Iran. And he's done it through four peace deals, which is four more than his predecessor. Um, but it's unfortunate that it doesn't give much coverage um, in the mainstream media. Um, uh, but I guess we shouldn't be surprised because in the last 24, 48 hours, there have been quite a few stories that have not gotten a ton of coverage in the mainstream media. Um, as former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer said, bias is often found in stories the press does not cover. And last week, we found out that Democrat Congressman Eric Swalwell was infiltrated by an alleged Chinese spy. This spy cozied up to Swalwell, raised funds for his 2014 campaign, and even planted an intern in his office. And that relationship continued until the FBI briefed him in 2015. And that was some very good reporting done by Axios. Um, but after entangling with this spy for years, Swalwell hypocritically went on to be one of the lead instigators of the Russia collusion hoax and the impeachment sham. Swalwell wrote this on his congressional webpage. President Trump and his team are directly and indirectly tied to Russia. That was not true. He then said in September of 2020, the president has a compromised relationship with Russia. Untrue. April of 2019, he said President Trump certainly acts on Russia's behalf and acts like Russia's leader. Not true. Uh, January 2019, Eric Swalwell said it's pretty clear President Donald Trump is an agent of Russia. Not true. And Swalwell shamelessly claimed Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner had an eagerness and a willingness to work with the Russians during the 2016 election. Again, it was false. Um, in 2019, he falsely claimed this yet again when inquired about collusion by a reporter. And these baseless attacks were false, yet covered breathlessly by the media. Uh, there was no coverage, however, of Swalwell being the one implicated with not Russia, but China. In fact, the New York Times website, as of this morning, had not one result for Eric Swalwell's ties to Chinese spies. Not one result. And when the Swalwell story broke, guess how many minutes of coverage it got on ABC, NBC, MSNBC, and CBS? Zero. CNN devoted three minutes and 16 seconds to it. Um, however, it was covered on Fox. Um, interesting pre-election and post-election coverage, too, on the Hunter Biden scandal, which was not covered at all uh, by many outlets in the lead-up to the election. In fact, on October 15th, you had a New York Times headline that said, Trump said to be warned that he was being given Russian disinformation over Hunter Biden. Um, now, December 10th, just a few months later, New York Times headline, investigation of Hunter Biden is likely to hang over Biden as he takes office. Washington Post on October 16th, the headline read, the truth behind the Hunter Biden non-scandal. Now you have the Washington Post headline that says this, Hunter Biden tax probe examining Chinese business deals. Politico, October 19th, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinformation, that's a favorite. Dozens of former Intel officials say, false yet again. December 2nd, now Politico reads, Justice Department's interest in Hunter Biden covered more than taxes. Really interesting turn of events uh, and good for those who covered what was a story all along and not Russia disinformation. Isn't it, isn't it hypocritical for you to accuse others of disinformation when you spread it every day? Jim Acosta is an asshole.